kind of an interesting story. I grew up in Texas. Um, I haven't really told many, many people this story, um, but I grew up in Texas and uh, it's a very sports oriented state. And I was uh, too little to play football and too short to play basketball. And uh, I was uh, afraid of having small objects hurled at me. So baseball was off, off the team too. So uh, what was left to me was band. And so I went to, uh, to the band night and at the time, uh, there was a trumpet player named Herb Alpert who was really popular, really famous guy. And it's like, everybody wanted to be Herb Alpert. And um, so I went to the, uh, the, the thing and got, got my trumpet. And the guy said, can you do this with your lips? And I've had this facial paralysis my entire life. And I couldn't play the trumpet. And I was devastated. And um, one of the uh, band directors came up to me and said, you know, there's a lot of drummers in the world, but there aren't very many good ones. And I want you to be a good one. So I said, okay, right, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Um, and um, after that, uh, everything um, just sort of happened from there, uh, basically because I had no natural talent <laughs> for it. And I just had a strong desire to, to, uh, to learn to play the drums, you know, and I kept doing it. I had a, a really good uh, middle school band director who took an interest in me and, and made sure that I could play. And I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. I just had a love for music that I couldn't explain and there was no reason for it. And uh, I think if you're passionate about something, um, you'll find a way to, to do it. Uh, uh, yeah, so after high school, uh, I went to East Texas State University was the name of the school and now it's called Texas A&M Commerce. Uh, and I was recruited there by a band director uh, at the time, was, uh, James F. Keene, who went on to the University of Illinois uh, or he retired um, and he recruited me because I uh, was really good at moving chairs and um, I became the equipment manager at East Texas State University uh, and got a really great education as a, as a musician and really started to, to uh, um, work towards becoming a band director which uh, was my ultimate goal in life is that I wanted to give back what my middle school band director had given to me is that gift of uh, purpose and joy in life and I wanted to give that back and uh, so I w went to, to East Texas and became a high school band director and I lasted about a year <laughs> as a high school band director. <laughs> so from then on I, I went to Wichita State University and, and started playing more music and met a lot of influential uh, musicians who were people who would, would become uh, influential musicians um, and played a lot more and then um, I uh, did my doctorate finally at the University of Kentucky uh, and uh, sort of the rest is history. <laughs> well, getting my mount line together, Chris and I, uh, Chris Long and I worked long and hard to, to come up with the, with the right combination of, of sounds. And I had a very specific idea of how I wanted the marimba and the vibes to sound. And uh, I personally don't uh, enjoy uh, the, uh, a really hard uh, overly articulate, thin sound on the marimba. I think the marimba has a, a, a natural, warm beauty that the right mallet can really bring that out. And a lot of the music that I play um, is music that's uh, meaningful to me in, uh, in that it's beautiful in some way or uplifting in some way. Uh, and um, I think people respond to a nice, beautiful, warm tone on, on the marimba and on the vibraphone. Uh, without being too harsh. And so I think the, the, the genesis of this line was really uh, at the center of it, uh, we always wanted to keep uh, a beautiful tone, and I call it the bel canto tone of the marimba. I always wanted to keep that sound in the forefront and then only um, add enough hardness for articulation in different settings. So as you go up into the harder mallets, you have um, a mallet like the 31 that can cut through a, a combo with a, drum, a drummer and a guitar player. Um, with little or no amplification. Um, and we're working on some other mallets now too that will uh, kind of continue that, uh, that th line of thinking. And then the, the ones in the middle are really uh, right where the marimba lives in my opinion. It's just, it's the beautiful kind of warm, the bottom three quarters of the instrument. Uh, they, they really sound beautiful. And of course the, the, the DM18s are, are the ones that just really have this uh, nice warm focused deep sounding marimba sound. So I, I just I wanted this whole spectrum of mallets that had uh, beautiful tone at the center of their sound. 
Well, uh, for me, I, I feel like that uh, there's a couple of things at, at, at work when you, when you pick mallets and you decide how you're going to use mallets. Uh, first and foremost, I, I, I start with kind of a, a mallet that I feel comfortable with. Uh, uh, it might be my learning mallet that I can play a little harder on while I'm still trying to explore a piece. And then as I get to know the piece a little bit better, then that sort of informs the, the decision about what mallet to use. Uh, sometimes I'll grade mallets, uh, meaning a softer mallet in the, on, for the low notes and a harder mallet for the high notes. Often I won't grade at all and uh, just try to, to be expressive uh, with my playing and control it with my, with my playing. Uh, and so it just it, it sort of depends. So I'm also uh, uh, not opposed to using other uh, mallets from innovative percussion artists. Uh, there are uh, a lot of great uh, signature mallets uh, with, with innovative percussion. Um, uh, there's these two young guys, um, Casey some, something and, and Pius something. Um, they're, like, they're like 12 or 13 years old. They're new, they're younger guys. And, and so I, I really like their mallets, um, you know, if, if, uh, if I'm in that kind of uh, playful mood, you know. So um, anyway, there's, there's that. Well, thus far has been about 25 <laughs> or more years. Um, I met Eric um, uh, way back when Innovative Percussion was three guys sitting on the couch watching Sports Center and wrapping mallets in the bonus room above Eric's garage. And um, I came in, uh, we were on a tour down here. And somebody said, you got to meet this Eric Johnson guy, he's got it going on, and, and he's, he's got this mallet thing that's going to be happening. Uh, and so I walked into this, this setting with these guys grabbing mallets and watching Sports Center, um, and I said, man, i got to be a part of this. Uh, this, this these, <laughs> these guys are going places right now. Uh, so uh, that began our relationship, and I started uh, at Innovative um, with one signature mallet, or well, not even with a signature mallet. I mean, I went for probably five or six years before uh, even getting a signature mallet. And I think um, the way Eric and George run uh, their business is it's, uh, uh, it's measured and it's uh, 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 careful, you know, and conservative in, in, in a lot of ways and a lot of really good ways. Uh, and I, I think they, they make decisions slowly and uh, with a lot of group decisions and I think that makes for really great products and so I, my line has evolved over you know maybe the last 15 years to get to where it is today and it's still evolving um, and even though it may not evolve super fast uh, it, it, it evolves in really positive ways and so my relationship with this company is uh, more familial you know it's uh, they're like family to me I, I, I firmly believe that it's important to me um, to be a part of this, this organization so um, uh, it's it's hard to, to even put into words how, how important innovative profession is has been to my career and, and just knowing these people so 